Really quick, if you haven't seen my episode from this morning on Displacer Kitten, make sure you check that episode out at some point because this card is cute, adorable, and very, very powerful. First up, yeah, uh, laughing was my reaction when I saw this card <laughs> because, well, this thing is just quite absurd. So to find out what I'm talking about, well, let's jump into it. So here we go. Legion Loyalty is an enchantment for, get ready for it, six white white. That's right, eight mana in total. This card is a mythic for a reason. Creatures you control have myriad. Yeah, that's just five, five words, right? One line of text, five words. Yes, there is reminder text, but an eight mana enchantment with five words, you typically don't see that. And as a reminder, myriad means whenever a creature with myriad attacks for each opponent other than the defending player, you may create a token that's a copy of that creature that's tapped and attacking that player, or a planeswalker they control, exile the tokens that end of combat. Yeah, that is an incredibly powerful keyword, an incredibly powerful effect. Essentially, you know, and obviously in a you know, single player game, that means absolutely nothing. But in a multiplayer format like Commander, assuming you've got all three of your opponents still around, well, you attack one, you get two extra tokens attacking the other ones. Now, that just in and of itself is an incredibly powerful thing, even if you say have, you know, a 6-6 six, six just swinging at one player. Cool, now you've got, you know, a 6-6 six, six swing at the other players as well, so that's Triple the power, you know, 18 total damage coming through instead of just six. But obviously, that's just a baseline. Because, of course, with Myriad, well, you can really take advantage of and use and abuse ETBs and LTBs that enter the battlefield triggers and leave the battlefield triggers very easily. And, and okay, with, with LTBs specifically, I do mean LTBs as in leave the battlefield because... If it's a death trigger, that does not trigger with this because, again, the tokens get exiled at the end of combat. They are not sacrificed. That being said, obviously, with some setup, you know, you could have, you know, a free sacrifice outlet in play if you've got, you know, an LTB that is a death trigger that you want to take advantage of. You could utilize those then with those tokens too, but still. I think for the vast majority of players out there, the cards that you are going to be taking advantage of are most likely ones with ETBs or, you know, with ones that just have, you know, a leave the battlefield trigger, but yeah, mostly ETBs. This card, again, although it is very simple and, you know, costs 8 mana, its impact is incredible, and this can just be a game-changing card the second it comes into play. You throw this down, you move to combat, you attack, and you basically triple your army. You know, instead of just swinging all out at one player, you are swinging all out at all players, and again, you can not only just hit three times as hard, but you can also just get ETBs. Here, there, and everywhere, again, basically doubling up on every creature's ETB that you might have. I mean, up to this point, and actually up to this set, we really haven't seen Myriad in too many things. I mean, Blade of Selves is one of the very few Myriad cards out there, and this card is incredibly powerful in the right deck. It's an equipment that costs 2 and costs 4 to equip, and it says equip creature as Myriad. So, yeah, again, a very simple card. This one only has, you know what, four words of text on it, you know, except for equip. But yeah, basically... It's just such a powerful thing because Myriad is an incredibly powerful keyword, and this one only impacts one creature. Just one of your creatures is going to have Myriad with this attached to it, versus this brand new enchantment's like, yeah, no, your entire army, just go for it. Now, obviously, the uh, the mana cost of Legion Loyalty is quite high at 8 mana, but still, I mean, this can be a game-finishing card. And, and yeah, I think it's got a lot of potential, and many players out there are going to be really excited about it. Again, when it comes to creatures having Myriad, they really have, you know, limited the power level of those creatures quite a bit. I mean, we've got cards like Warchief Giant, a 5-3 with Haste and Myriad. So, cool! Swing right away with, you know, uh, three five threes. Woo! And, of course, then we've also got cards like Banshee the Dread Choir, a 4-4 four with Myriad, and when it deals counters to a player, that player discards a card. So, yeah, if you can get them through, great! And, yeah, same thing with Brood Birth Viper, a 3-3 three three with Myriad, that has when it deals counters to a player, you may draw a card. So yeah, a, a very limited, you know, power and toughness on these creatures, obviously, because you're getting three times as many of them, essentially. And yeah, they don't really have any evasion, but if you do get them through, cool, you get some additional value, but you need to be able to get them through because these cards are designed, you know, to actually, in a way, trying to balance out, you know, the power level of, you know, a mechanic like Myriad. And now with this enchantment, it's like, no, no balancing required for any of your creatures. Just, you know, whatever that creature is, now you get two more of them. 
Now, obviously, when it comes to Legion loyalty, you know, the creatures that you're going to be using and abusing with this card, depending on your color identity, but obviously, you know, at the very least, you have to have white in your color identity because, you know, the card, you know, isn't white. But anyways, Sun Titan, Karmic Guide, and Limit Up Primordial are a couple that came to mind. Sun Titan with Myriad, my goodness, a 6-6 Vigilant Giant that has when enters the battlefield or attacks you may return target permanent card with mana value 3 less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Now, keep in mind, yes, Sun Titan does have an attack trigger, but you are not going to be getting that attack trigger from those Myriad tokens because they come into play tapped and attacking. So because they're already attacking, you don't get the attack triggers, but you do get, you know, their ETB triggers. So on top of Sun Titan, your actual ones, you know, attack trigger, you also get their ETBs. So just in combat, that's going to be three, you know, assuming three opponents. And speaking of getting things back, how about Karmic Guide, a 2-2, and when it enters the battlefield, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So... Yeah, just by swinging, you are getting back two creatures from your graveyard. And of course, you know, outside of getting things back, we can take things away as well, like with Luminate Primordial, a 4-7 Vigilant Avatar that has when it enters the battlefield for each opponent, exile to one target creature that player controls, and that player gains life equal to its power. So, yeah, attack with this, get rid of six creatures? I mean, sure, your opponents gain some life, but who cares? You just wipe the board, essentially, with just attacking with this and having that enchantment in play. Now, another thing to keep in mind, and I probably should have mentioned this earlier, you know, outside of ETBs, you can also take advantage of creatures that maybe have some combat damage triggers, or things like Grateful Apparition. It has, whenever it deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker, proliferate. So, yes, a 1-1 flyer that can usually get through an opponent, great. But, you know, if you can get all three of them through, you know, including the tokens is basically what I'm saying. You know what I mean? You can proliferate three times just for swinging with one creature. So, make sure you're keeping in mind, you know, those combat damage triggers as well. Now, if you also have black in your color identity, you can consider cards like, you know, Plague Crafter, Grey Merchant Asphodel, better known as Gary, and Massacre Worm. Plague Crafter is a fantastic card, a 3-2 Human Shaman, and when it enters the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature Planeswalker, each player who can't discards a card. So, swinging with this Myriad can be a massive play. Again, you're going to get two copies of it. You're probably just going to sacrifice those copies, which is fine, and your opponents each have to sacrifice a creature, discard a card. So, yeah, I mean, that's going to be, what, six creatures, or, you know, in a combination of six creatures and cards in total? That is massive. Speaking of massive, oh, Gary, you are going to be fantastic with this. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent loses X life or X is your devotion to black. You gain life equal to the life lost this way. So, assuming you've got no other black permanents in play and no other pips, well, that's just fine. You still are going to be draining your opponents for a ton when swinging with this. Each of the token versions of Gary are going to see, well, everything, including, you know, each other. So, yeah, each of them count six devotion at the very least just for them being cards that have two devotion themselves, including the original. So, each Gary is going to drain your opponents for six life, and you are going to be gaining 18 life for each Gary. So, that's what, uh, 12 life drained in total and 36 life gained from one attack and again. This is at a minimum because if you've got any other black pips in play, good luck to your opponents. And especially good luck to your opponents if you got Massacre Worm, a 6-5 Worm. When it enters the battlefield, creature's opponents control, get minus 2, minus 2 until end of turn. Whenever a creature opponent controls dies, that player loses 2 life. So attack with this, make 2 token copies of it, your opponent's creatures get minus 4, minus 4 until end of turn, and whenever any of their creatures die, you know, from that or from combat or anything else, they're all going to lose 6 life per creature. Yeah, that can be game-ending, and yeah, there's a reason why Legion Loyalty costs 8 mana, because... It has the potential to make things very absurdly powerful. But now let's move on to green. What if we had green in our color identity as well? I mean, of course, something like Rex Age can just be fantastic when it enters the battlefield and may destroy target artifact or enchantment. So, yeah, I mean, that's just a lot of value right there. Just swing, get two copies, get rid of two more artifacts and enchantments. Have fun. And speaking of fun, of course, you know, Avenger of Zendikar. You know, who doesn't love that ETB? A 5 5 elemental, and when it enters the battlefield, create a 0 1 green plant creature token for each land you control. So let's say that you've got, you know, seven lands in play. That's going to be, what, 14 plants you just make just for attacking with this? And of course, it also has landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under control, you may put a plus one counter on each plant creature you control. Now, obviously, you know, during combat, you're not going to be able to just, you know, throw a land down unless, you know, you maybe have something like an Evolving Wilds that you can crack or maybe a way to tap a creature to put a land into play, you know, those like Sky Shroud Ranger type of creatures. But yeah, I mean, obviously, if you can do that, you are going to be getting three counters on every single plant that you control because of the original Avenger and the two tokens. And okay, not that you really needed it, but uh, Crater Hoof Behemoth. Yeah, that's a very expensive card. And um, and yeah, this can be absurd with Myriad because it's a 5-5 five, five with haste. And when it enters the battlefield, creatures you control gain trim will get plus X plus X until end of turn where X is the number of creatures you control. 
So this card is already, of course, absurd on its own and a fantastic finisher, and it's just even more ridiculous when this has Myria. Because let's just say, you know, you've got uh, even just one creature on the table. You play Crater Hoof, of course it has haste, so you can attack right away. Your creatures get, what, plus two, plus two, until end of turn and gain trample. You attack, you get two copies of it, which are coming into play, tapped and attacking. You get that ETB still, so yeah, it's gonna be another plus four, plus four for each of those. So that's plus 10, plus 10 in total, and again, this is just, a, you know, a very base level example of only one other creature in play before doing this. And again, it's not like Crater Hoof Behemoth needed any more help than it already has. Next up though, well, what if you've got red in your color identity? Well, how about Combustible Gear Hulk? A 6-6 six, six with first strike and when it enters the battlefield, target opponent may have you draw three cards. If they don't, you mill three cards and Combustible Gear Hulk deals damage to that player with the total mana value of those cards. If this is being played in a deck that, you know, again, does have permanents that are quite large, like, you know, Legion Loyalty, your opponent probably is going to want you to draw the three cards, because if they don't, they're going to be taking a ton of damage. So either you're going to be dishing out a good amount of damage, or again, you're going to be drawing, what, six cards just by attacking with this with Myriad? On top of, again, at a base level, also just having a 6-6 a six, six first striker attacking each of your opponents, which is lovely. But how about a much smaller creature, but one that is vastly more expensive, and, and goodness gracious, this thing is just incredible with Myriad. Enters the battlefield, create X treasure tokens, wrecks the number of artifacts, and enchantments your opponent's control. Now, Dockside Extortionist doesn't need any help to be good, but, um, but yeah, Myriad on this, uh, just attack and uh, make an absurd amount of treasure tokens with your two copies that are coming into play. Or how about, you know, a more specific kind of card that works very well in a dragon deck with Scourge of Alcus? It has whenever it or another dragon enters battlefield under control, deals X damage any target wrecks the number of dragons you control. Again, if you've already got a decent amount of dragons on the board and you attack, well, you're going to be getting a lot of very powerful triggers, dishing out a ton of damage thanks to this. And finally, how about blue? And let's just quickly highlight some cards like Muldrifter, Archaeomancer, and Peregrine Drake. Muldrifter has when it enters the battlefield, draw two cards. So yeah, what's not to love? You just swing with this, you draw four cards. Who doesn't enjoy that? I mean, your opponents probably, but you enjoy it. Speaking of which, our Kaomancer is just a 1-2, but when it enters the battlefield, return target insert sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. So just swing with this tiny creature. It does not matter that you're really not going to be getting any damage out of it. <laughs> I mean, if your opponents get hit by one, who cares? But yeah, get two copies of this and return two things from your graveyard back to your hand. And then Peregrine Drake has when it enters the battlefield, untap up to five lands, and yeah, this card doesn't need any help to be any more broken, but yeah, throw Myriad on that, untap ten lands when you attack with this, essentially, just getting two copies of it, and yeah, you can generate a lot of mana in that turn by untapping all those lands. And actually, uh, now that I've thought about it, Peregrine Drake, this is actually the second time today that I've already brought this up, so if you want to see this card again, make sure you check out my earlier episode. Next up, though, one thing I do want to mention is that, of course, Myriad is an incredible keyword, and it just gets even better if you're able to get even more combats, you know, with something like Relentless Assault. It's a sorcery for a two red red and says, untap all creatures that attack this turn after this main phase, there's an initial combat phase, followed by additional main phase. So, again, just assuming, okay, you know, at a base level, you've got, you know, your army of creatures, whatever, you swing all of them at one player. Again, you are getting a copy of all those creatures, for all your opponents and you're getting you know again all those etbs and ltbs as well so then you just cast this and then you get to do that again so the amount of value that you can get out of you know that myriad is doubled essentially when you can give yourself an extra combat so you're already essentially what tripling the value of your creatures with myriad and then you're doubling it so that's what time six value math but yeah extra combats of myriad can get pretty absurd and speaking of absurd, well, let's quickly talk about some commanders that might want to consider this card. And the first that actually came to my mind is a pretty disgusting one with Reaper King. Reaper King has, whenever another Scarecrow comes into play under your control, destroy target permanent. Basically, your Scarecrows are Vindicates when they come into play. And yes, um, Myriad for all your Scarecrows, let's just swing out and basically destroy everything. Because essentially for every single Scarecrow that does attack, again, assuming three opponents, you get to destroy two permanents because of those Scarecrows coming into play. Yeah, you're, you're probably going to run out of things to destroy and have to destroy some lands, and yeah, that's probably going to be game right there. Next up, how about yet another five-color commander with Nib Mizzet Reborn? Nib Mizzet is a 6-6 six, six flying dragon avatar that has what enters the battlefield, reveal the top 10 cards of your library. For each color pair, choose a card that's exactly those colors from among them, put the chosen cards in your hand, the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Now, Nib Mizzet decks tend to benefit from ways to use and abuse ETBs, especially its own well, and other creatures as well, but yeah, even just attacking with Nib Mizzet, you're going to get two token copies of it thanks to Myriad, 
No, you'll lose those token copies because of the legend rule, but you're still going to get the ETBs. So you can get an absurd amount of card advantage again, getting that ETB twice, revealing the top 10 cards twice, and getting basically, you know, a ton of two color cards out of it. And then, of course, you know, with your other creatures that might be in play that you utilize, you know, some of those two color creatures that have ETBs as well. Well, with Myriad, now you can get their ETBs again an absurd amount of times. And speaking of using and abusing ETBs, well, Amrith the Lustrous is a 6-6 dragon with flying that says whenever another permanent enters the battlefield under your control, get the top card of your library, but choose a card type with that permanent, you may reveal that card and put it in your hand. This could definitely be a top end high value card for a creature based Amrith deck. Essentially, hey, let's attack with creatures, see if we've got some creatures on top of our library by getting a ton of more creatures in play. And of course, you know, if you've got creatures that actually go get you maybe lands, like something like a Wood Elves, yeah, you're going to get a ton of lands and also be able to, you know, get those reveals as well to get lands off the top on top of getting even more creatures in your hand. Yeah, the value can be absurd. I mean, even something as simple as, you know, a commander like Arcades might want to consider this. A 3-5 Elder Dragon with Flying and Vigilance that says whenever a creature with Defender enters the battlefield under control, draw a card. And of course, each creature you control a defender assigns its combat damage equal to its toughness, power, and power, and can attack as though it didn't have defender. Basically, swing with your walls. So now when you swing with your walls, you get even more walls coming into play attacking players. Yeah, Magic's a really weird kind of game sometimes. Anyways, and every single one of those walls is going to have you draw two cards when they are creating creature tokens from that myriad. Now, you may have noticed that I only mentioned commanders that have green in their color identity so far because, yeah, this is a really high converted mana cost. Not that you can't get there, but yeah, green is definitely the color that is the best at ramping. That being said, yeah, Legion Loyalty is definitely not for every deck, but the amount of impact that it can have right away on the turn it comes down just by swinging once can be game-ending, and you can just do some really powerful and pretty busted things with it. I am definitely excited to see what kinds of plays players can come up and yeah, if I'm playing against a player and they throw this down, they have any kind of an army, I am going to be very, very scared. That being said though, make sure you're on the lookout for even more exciting quick takes and spoilers coming up on this channel. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.